let's talk about it first. I'm talking about the Miami police honoring Black History Month in one of the weirdest ways I've probably heard of since the NBA tried to do it. We also talking about Alabama, the city of Alabama actually stopped a Black History Month event happening because of some dumb reason of something that the author did. And it wasn't even actual actions. We're going to talk about that, find out more. And a funeral home is about to get taxed for what they did to this old ass lady. We're going to talk about movies, music, sports, all that and more. That's coming up. You kicking it with KCMC, baby. I got a full episode for you today. My name is KCMC. 10 plus years radio experience, radio personality, music producer, I mean, director, all that good stuff. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of things right now. Talking about, first and foremost, funeral home finds a woman breathing hours after she was declared dead. This story is coming from APnews.com, the Associated Press. 82-year-old woman was pronounced dead at a New York nursing home, but found to be breathing just a few hours later at, a, at the funeral home that she was at. Now, she was pronounced dead at the Water's Edge Rehab and Nursing Center in Port Jefferson. That's on Long Island in New York. This is around 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Saturday, by the way. Not this recent Saturday, but I think, like, two Saturdays. But anyway, point is, she was sent to the funeral home and arrived there at 1.30. They say they discovered her breathing at 2.09 p.m. Lord, have mercy. Can you imagine what the person who works there felt like when they noticed that this body was breathing? That is that work. Listen, I don't care who you are. You work in funeral homes. First of all, you already built different. But you work in funeral homes. That means you already got it in your head. You know, can't nobody in this building mess with me because everybody in here dead. Everybody dead. Or they should be. I ain't expecting nobody. You know, worst case scenario, everybody always thinks in a funeral home, I'm expecting a dead body or a zombie or somebody think you dead, and then they just pop up. This was literally that situation. <laughs> I know it had to have been trauma for that person dealing with it. But ultimately, let's talk about the trauma that the woman suffered and the woman's family suffered for going through this, believing that this woman was dead. Now, this was all within three hours. Her being pronounced dead, being sent to the funeral home, and then being found breathing. This was in three hours. From 11.15, her being pronounced dead, to 2.09, her being uh, found uh, breathing. Let's just say that. So, maybe all of her family didn't, didn't know. But the point is, somebody was notified. Somebody knew. Don't matter. The family and this woman traumatized. This because it is the hospital's fault. Is it, is, it, is it a specific nurse or doctor's fault? Is it the funeral home's fault? Whose fault? Who takes fault here? Is it the woman's fault? The 82-year-old woman, for her heart not being responsive, when they ask for a response. I think we should look at all perspectives. Ultimately, there was a situation in Iowa at a nursing home where they accidentally pronounced the woman dead on January 3rd of this year 2023 pronounced her dead sent her to the, to the funeral home turns out she was breathing they returned her back to the nursing home she was at she ended up actually dying two days later man january 5th that's a real situation that funeral home was sued i think uh, i think they were fine they were sued i believe but they were also fined ten thousand dollars you see what i'm saying so they were blaming it on the funeral home, I believe. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the nursing home. Excuse me. In Iowa, the situation. Who should be blamed in this case? Obviously the hospital, but I think the woman who faked her death should also be charged. Let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments or even call into the show. 313-466-4386. We're going to go ahead and switch up the topic real quick. I got another one for you. I want to talk about what happened in Alabama most recently. This story is coming from CNN.com. It's a suburban Alabama community. They supporting this black author after the school district took back their invitation that they gave him to speak to the children. They wanted him to speak to the children and read his books. And then they said, nah, we good. They were actually paying him. This man took 
took time in his schedule to take these specific days off in a specific time, maybe flew here or whatever to Birmingham, Alabama. And then they said, no, we don't want you to speak. This is because, and this man's name is Derek Barnes. And we're giving you all the heat for Black History Month, by the way, if you ain't noticed the thing. Derek Barnes, known for writing stories for and featuring black children. They're no, he'll no longer be visiting the Hoover, Hoover City Schools, the three Hoover City Schools he was scheduled to go to, because he allegedly got some type of backlash from parents in regards to his social media posts. Now, what was he posting on social media that made parents say, I don't want him talking to my kids? A man who writes and Ill writes children's books? What did he say on social media? Now, a CNN review, CNN actually reviewed the author's social media posts and found that they predominantly feature photos of his family, writing, and music he enjoys, as well as comments about news events and political issues, which he included police brutality and the January 6th uh, Capitol uh, insurrection, or whatever you want to call it, Capitol invasion. He, he posted all that on his social media. So there were some parents allegedly that felt some type of way about it and didn't want him to speak at the school to his kids about his books, which are not pertaining to what he posted on social media. Now, I didn't look at his social media, which in hindsight, I feel like I wish I had. But the point is, they the school board felt like whatever this parent complaint was, which the author said he, he was never notified of a parental complaint. But whatever this complaint was, the school board felt like it was valid enough for them to cancel him altogether, even though it was a paid event, three paid events for this man. Now, specifically in Alabama, the state's board of education adopted a resolution in 2021 titled, quote, declaring the preservation of intellectual freedom and non-discrimination in Alabama's public schools, end quote, which, according to the Legal Defense Fund, quote, prevents educators from teaching the full and accurate history of racial discrimination and civil rights in Alabama and the United States, end quote. That's the part that got me. In Alabama, the, the, board of Ed, the state board of education actually adopted this resolution. They say you can't teach the full and you can't teach the real history an accurate history of what happened with slavery and all that. That's why they're trying to rename slavery involuntary relocation or something like I'm like, what? Yo, that's crazy. Y'all doing too much, bro. So as a result, they're on that type of time. So they're saying, you can't even come over here and talk to the kids about your book. Just because, I, I, I don't want to say, but I haven't read this book, but mainly because probably it just features black characters, black kids. Black kids on the cover, black issues. One of his books called Crown talks about the black kids and the black men, black culture, hairstyles, haircuts, things of that nature. That being our crown. The white people in Alabama didn't want to hear that. So they got him up out of here. So as a result, it was some people on the internet that actually started to go fund me. Started to go fund me and a lot of people came together and they raised a portion of the $9,900 that Derek Barnes would have been paid for those events. Damn near $10,000. They damn they pay him out of almost $10,000, bro. About $3,300 per school for three schools. Nah, that's crazy. And they didn't reimburse him? Reimburse him? Nah, nah, nah. You got to come on my bread. You got to come on my bread. Now, do you feel like maybe his books could have been insensitive to other races? Maybe he didn't include other races. He just highlighted the black community in Alabama being probably predominantly white. Maybe they felt like he was excluding the predominant children in that, in that house, in that class, in that, or in that school, those different schools, that school district. I don't know what the, the, the population is for that school district, but if you know that, Please type it in the live chat in the comments. The point is, I think the school board was absolutely wrong for this. Absolutely wrong for kicking him out, especially with it being a paid event. I can see if he volunteered his time 
and say, nah, you know what? We can't do this. When I found out he was out, he got paid damn near 10 grand. I said, no, you got to pay my man his Montes. Give him his manky. He need that. And it was nice of people to actually start this GoFundMe online, but I, I, I don't know how that GoFundMe stuff works. But let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments or call into the show. Do you feel like his books were insensitive to the white community? Do you feel like he should have included everybody? Do you feel like he should have been canceled from speaking at those schools? Go off in the live chat in the comments or call into the show. 313-466-4386. I got another topic for you. One more. This is the main one. We're talking about Miami police for Black History Month. They're actually <laughs> unveiling these new police cars. This story coming from CNN.com also. Where they just wrap the police cars up in like pan-African colors, you know, uh, red, black, green. And they also got different kente cloths and, and, and sands on it. On the back window, it says, Miami Police Supports Black History Month. Black History Month. Not black people. Not the black community. Black History Month. Do you know how I see this? Now, on the surface... You might be like, well, that's a good thing for them to do. I'm glad. What's wrong with them doing that? I feel like that's, well, they're supporting black history. Isn't that what you want, black man? Nah, man. Hell no. Nah. We want equality, equity, and reparations. This ain't that. This is like when the NFL want to put uh, uh, inspired change on the, on the end zones or or they let people put uh, 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 uh Love, choose love on the back of their helmets. In racism in the end zone or on the back of their helmets. Don't nobody give a damn about that. Ain't nobody looking at an NFL player helmet and saying, man, you know what? Maybe I should stop hating black people. Ain't nobody ever, ever, never thought about that. That ain't helping. Black community has been asking for reparations, equality, and equity for decades, for generations. Y'all giving us the NBA paint stuff or or using the CGI to paint stuff on the court supporting black history or black people. Like, come on, bro. So now the Miami police want to just wrap their police in the same police cars that's going to lock niggas up. Excuse my friend. God, I ain't want to say the N word. The same police car that's going to lock black people up is about to be wrapped in Black History Month, vinyl. Oh, how is that about to look? Man, y'all better only drive that around the suburbs. How is it going to look if you got black, only black people or majority black people or people of color in the back of the cars where, you're, where it says on the back window, Miami supports Black History Month? Oh, my God, bro. That's corny. Like, that don't even look right, aesthetically speaking. Then you got this situation where they said, they said the police department had previously used police cruisers to honor other causes, such as autism, breast cancer awareness, the military, and Hispanic Heritage Month. So they honored all of those months before the union got together and asked them to represent Black History Month. Not like any of that matters. But Black History Month was the last on their list. <laughs> and not only that, they about to have black people in the back of their cars. That's goofy. This is I feel like this is the epitome of the example of saying, this, this, this ain't what we want. This doesn't help. This does not help. If the police are still gonna, let me let me not get into it. But if if we're still gonna see majority black people in the back of the police cruisers for light crimes, and the police cruisers are supposed to be supporting Black History Month, it just doesn't look right. What are you really doing? Are you are you giving black people a pass? Are you are you are you trying to e give them a little bit of give them a little white privilege? For Black History Month, do that. Other than that, this this means nothing to me or to black people. That's just what I think. Let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments or call into the show. 313-466-4386. Let's switch it up. 
want to talk about movie that I recently saw on corn stream scenes I saw you people what you mean you people saw this on Netflix no endorsement Starring Eddie Murphy Jonah Hill I thought he was Seth Rogen but I forgot Seth Rogen is the one with glass he's he's Jonah Hill with glasses but anyway the point is this is about we've seen a scenario before black family and a white family they're coming together because a woman and a man of both races of each separate race is coming together and they want to get married so now you got to collide the family the black family was Muslim the white family being Jewish heavy in their beliefs beliefs and culture so they come together Eddie Murphy and them obviously being a black family that's Muslim and his wife me alone then you got uh, I think the chick from Seinfeld and then some other dude they represent the Jews or Jewish people Jewish community with Jonah Hill all right, so Jonah Hill's mirroring Nunu or Lauren London. So then they got to try to come together. So I'm not going to lie. It had a lot of funny parts. I thought it was a funny movie overall. Funny movie. It did what it was supposed to do. It delivered. I didn't think anything of it. That's just what I thought. I said, yo, this is a funny movie. Go see it. That's all I had to say. But then I had to think of it from other perspectives, subjectively speaking, right? And I said, you know what? There's a lot of symbolism in this movie that we can't just overlook, right? The two different cultures coming together. The dad of the of of the bride, soon to be bride, who's usually supposed to be a a, a hard body or you know a mean dad, overprotective. He's the bad guy allegedly in this movie. AKA the the Muslims are supposed to be the bad people, right? Then you got the, the Jewish community, Jewish people, Jonah Hill and his family who are just naive and don't know and just are so innocent. Also lights his kufi on fire. The symbolism behind that. It's not like they light, light, lit a yarmulke on, on, on fire. No, it, it didn't go there. They did, they did the kufi. The symbolism behind that too. And still acting so innocent like nothing. I, I don't know. But anyway. They let Eddie Murphy and black people get a lot of stuff off in this movie. Cool. Fred Hampton was murdered type hoodie and all that other type of stuff. That's cool. But different symbolisms that, you know, the larger, more intellectual people can understand. It, it just, it, it still makes you, it makes the black community look bad. Or it could. It could. I don't want to wrap the entire black community up in just that movie. But anyway... It's two different sides to look at this. It's just a funny movie, objectively speaking. Subjectively, you could see the subtle jabs that they were doing, the subtle differences, and the contrast that they were doing. Contrast between black communities, white communities, or the Muslim community and Jewish community. But let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments or call into the show. 313-466-4386. We're going to go ahead and switch it up for you, too. We about to talk about music real quick in the audio audit. All right, so we about to switch it up cuz I didn't I didn't listen to that. This is from a new artist called To Pre Grounds. The name of the off. Oh, the name of the project was actually called Gustin Bieber. Did I spell that right? Justin Bieber. Let me actually double check that because I don't want to look like a fool. B I. Yeah, there we go. So the name of the album is Justin Bieber. Nine tracks, 25 minutes. Very quick listen, just outside of the range of projects that I like to listen to that respectfully between 30 and 45 minutes. All right. But it's a little bit shorter now. I appreciate it. West Coast feel. Don't know anything about the artist, but I believe he's a West Coast artist. When I listen to it, I hear other West Coast artists. So yeah. So as I'm enjoying my brewski. I'm listening. I'm like, yo, this got a West Coast feel, and I'm actually bobbing and feeling this. I can, I can feel myself or hear myself or see myself listening to this in sunny weather at a party, social gig, or on the West Coast. Pretty nice. Now I didn't get through the whole album or the whole project. I listened to about four out of nine tracks, but so far I was vibing with it. But all the songs also dang near, they dang near sound the same. They got the same kind of melody, same kind of tempo, same kind of beat almost. That's that West Coast. Like, like kind of like that type of vibe. So with that being said, objectively speaking for what it is, it was cool. 
I actually was rocking with it. Subjectively, this ain't what I listen to because I like to listen to lyrics, beat, production, all of that wrapped in one. And this had no lyrics. I had no idea what this man or woman was talking about. I, I believe it's a man. But still, I have no idea what they were talking about on this album. But anyway, let me know what you think about the pregrams. If you listen to this album, this person, this artist, or let me know what you think about this project. Gustin Bieber. Listen to it on YouTube Music. No endorsement. Shout out to YouTube. Go off in the live chat in the comments or call them to the show. 313-466-4386. Let's switch. Let's talk about sports, baby. B ah, from the stands of a sports fan. Mm hmm So I got to get mine off. It's a lot of stuff I want to get through. I really want to talk about sports today. So let's start. Boxing MMA. First and foremost, Roy Jones Jr. got another exhibition fight. He's fighting former UFC lightweight champion Anthony Pettis. They're going to compete in a pro boxing match. So even though Anthony Pettis is a mixed martial artist, they're going to go straight to Roy Jones Jr. Arena, straight boxing. Exhibition match, exhibition match April 1st in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, this is where Anthony Pettis is from. So that's, I mean, maybe that makes it a little bit more interesting. That's a mid to small market, Milwaukee, but it is what it is. Where will it be shown? I don't know, but that's something to look out for in the boxing world. Also, did you know Floyd Money Mayweather has another fight coming up this month? As a matter of fact, February 25th, which is a Saturday, he's going to be fighting Aaron the Joker Chalmers exhibition fight. And it's going to be on Zeus. The Zeus app. The same app and channel that the Jocelyn's Cabernet was on. And it was another show. I think, like, uh, it was a few other reality TV shows that's on Zeus, the Zeus channel. But it's a black-owned channel. Happy Black History Month. And, and his name is, he's the founder and CEO, Le Lemiel Plummer. This man is from Detroit. This man's parents is from Detroit. This man's parents own three TV stations in Detroit. I had no idea. So I got to support Zeus. I might go ahead and subscribe again. I subscribed just for the Jocelyn's Cabaret away from my girl, but now I might have to subscribe again. Support. Something like $5.99 a month. So I think it might be a little bit more pay-per-view with this. Also, you can, you can pay for the pay-per-view or pre-order like starting February, starting now, but... Roy Jones, I'm not Roy Jones, Floyd Money Mayweather. If you want to watch him win again, you can go ahead and check this out. Then you got Javante Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia scheduled for April 2023. This year, April. So we're looking forward to that also. Uh, Damn, you know what? I had something for college basketball, but I really don't have anything. So let's go ahead and keep it moving. I want to talk about the USFL. USFL, that season starts in April. That's all I really got for that. Nothing really big in regards to USFL. NFL, though, we're going to talk about the NFL. The Super Bowl is officially scheduled Sunday, February 12th. That should be the 12th, right? Anyway, it's next Sunday, which should be the 12th. Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles versus the Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes versus Jalen Hurts. I like both of them. I respect Jalen Hurts for what he's did over his career, even his college career, going from Alabama to Oklahoma, and now getting his shine in Philly after a few years. Going to the Super Bowl within his first two, three years, just like Joe Burrow did. Oh, yo, I love this. I got to support the kid, man. And they played the Lions first this season and beat them. Not like I take pride in that, but I knew that the Eagles were going to be a problem when I knew we were playing them first. So shout out to Jalen Hurts. I just want to get see it. Like I always say, I ain't got no horse in this race. I'm rooting for the Lions. But at the end of the day, I just want to see a good game. I don't want to see no, no, no blowouts. I want to see it coming down to the last second. That's what I want to see. And now I don't want to see no field goals. None of that field goal stuff. Somebody got to be down by like four. But anyway, then you got two black quarterbacks facing off in the Super Bowl. The two brothers on the opposing teams. Travis Kelsey from the Kansas City Chiefs and Jason Kelsey from the Philadelphia Eagles. 
All right, so other than that, let's move on to the NBA real quick because this is what I really want to touch on. So let's touch, talk about it real quick. LeBron James on track to beat the NBA record of most points scored in NBA history by a single player, 38,387. Excuse me. Current record held by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar been held for like 30 years or something like that. 40 years, something crazy. Point is, LeBron James is on schedule to beat that record this month. Oklahoma City Thunder is where they think he's going to beat that record, which is technically tomorrow, Tuesday, February 7th. The tickets to that game were like $7,000 just to get in to see him break the all-time scoring record. I don't think that's worth it, if I got to be honest. Like, you can't cash in on your experience. But anyway, the point is, he's on, He's averaging in his career 27.1 points, 5.1 rebound. Oh, oh, that's somebody else. Excuse me, that's somebody else. He is averaging 27.2 points, though. So he's on pace to beat that record tomorrow. We'll see. We're going to keep you updated. Now, I do want to say, let me just get this off my chest in, in regards to that. I'm going to say this real quick because I'm going to really say this after he beats the record. The game is different. It's a lot less physical than when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and them was playing. The 80s and the 90s. Even the early 2000s. It's a lot less physical than then. With that being said, you're the big person on the field, on the, on the court. When you're coming down the field, pen, down the court penetrating, people don't want to, they don't want to get in your way because they don't want to get that easy foul. You were crying over Jason Tatum or somebody allegedly hitting your arm for your layup when you played against the Boston Celtics. Knowing you big as hell, and that probably didn't stop you from actually slam dunking the ball or laying it up. But you just want to rely on that foul, so you overreacted. You play on that. You play on that. Knowing you're a big-ass player, that's my problem with you, LeBron. So, yeah, it's easier for you to score because ain't nobody trying to touch you and get an easy-ass foul. Everybody's shooting threes nowadays, which is why we're seeing games go to 150 points. That's all I want to say in regards to that. But I got to respect your game. You beat the record or you're on pace to beat the record, God willing. So I got to respect that. I'm seeing that in my, in my lifetime. So shout out to LeBron James. I respect him as a player, but I got to have some hate for him also. But we also got to talk about LeBron's boy, Kyrie Irving from the Brooklyn Nets. This man allegedly requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets, and now they gave it to him. They're saying Brooklyn Nets are currently trading Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks. He's supposed to be in Dallas right now, Monday, February 6th. He's supposed to be there. Trading them for Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie with the unprotected 2029 first-round draft pick and second-round picks in 27 and 29. In exchange for Kyrie Irving and Markeith, Markeith Morris. This is what I want to say. If the Nets just traded you, that's one thing. But if you requested a trade, Kyrie, after you went to Brooklyn, you recruited Kevin Durant, and now you want to leave? Now I feel like you on some sucker stuff, bro. Now I ain't gonna disrespect you like a lot of other platforms are doing, but you are tripping, bro. You tripping. Your legacy is gone. Only championship you got was with LeBron in 2016 or 2018, whenever that was. Point is, you got it with LeBron. What can you do by yourself? Wasn't that the point of you going to Brooklyn? You and Kevin? Even, even if you, Kev, and James Harden teamed up and got one, they would have said, yeah, y'all forming the super team, but at least y'all got it without Steph or Kevin or, or LeBron James. Y'all would have did it by yourself. Now you're just separating going to another team. This is your fourth team. You're looking like one of these little, one of these regular players out here. You're not going to get it in Dallas, not with Luka. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Kevin Durant, I promise you, if you request a trade from the Brooklyn Nets, because that's the only way the Nets going to trade you, is if you request a trade. You weak as hell. You weak as hell. And your legacy is down the drain, too. I just had to say that. We'll speak more on that later on. Later on. We'll keep it moving, though. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Let's go ahead and get up out of here. I appreciate you for kicking with me, man. I just wanted to get on the show, put some content out there. Do me a favor. 
follow me. Kick it with KCMC on all social media at KIWKCMC. That's just kick it with KCMC. The abbreviations on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All right. And follow my sponsor. I want to thank my sponsor, Team Elite. They on all social media also at T E A M E L I T E 313 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And for that premium athletic leisure wear, that's athletic casual wear, t shirts, sweatshirts, uh, 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 hoodies, tech fleece, jogger sets, varsity sets, and more. It's all on their website, teamelite313.com. Ask your mom. Do code K I W K C for free shipping, by the way. Just want to check them out. Do me a favor if you got this far. Please donate to the show so we can grow. Cash App is right there. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. And share for, share with a friend so we can grow, man. Sorry for cussing and saying N-words on here. We might just go ahead and scrap this video. I ain't going to lie. But we're going to try to keep it clean. Thanks for supporting.